Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. Assalamu alaikum Ramadan Mubarak for those of you who either are entering into the second fast or started uh, fasting this morning. Um, blessed Ramadan to you. Uh, and Jazakallah khair for joining us for uh, this, uh, this journey, this session. And um, for those of you who came yesterday, um, whether you're joining us for the first time or uh, returning, um, I pray that you found some benefit in our first session and that we continue um, in, in, this, uh, in this reflection. And so uh, just a quick recap for whether you're joining us now or uh, uh, have you know, joined us yesterday. Uh, one thing I like to do is keep a sense of connection going from between the sessions. So I don't, I don't want it to feel like uh, if you missed one session or if you showed up to one, uh, you don't know what we had done the, the day before. So the hope is that we at least just give uh, some due diligence to what was covered a little bit before. But uh, I wanted to lift up a couple things um, from our tradition and uh, from the the wisdom of, of uh, you know, some of the Muslim sages uh, concerning the remembrance of Allah. Uh, just something real quick. So uh, many of us have heard the very famous uh, uh, ayah, uh, ayah in the Quran um, in which Allah says that, you know, verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. Uh, and that's one thing that uh, personally for myself um, has been a big priority to uh, to try and engage uh, with folks in terms of, uh, and myself first and foremost, with incorporating this aspect of rest um, into our Ramadan. Ramadan, as I mentioned, I wrote, wrote a post yesterday, um, and just after having so many conversations with folks who really felt this need uh, and uh, the, to, to just make, you know, Ramadan just uh, an all or nothing deal, but then having a sense of failure, having a sense of guilt, having a sense of shame associated with that. Um, and realizing by the time they got to the end of Ramadan, they don't know what they just had gone through. It was just so much that they, they it was just, uh, it was just so overwhelming, but, um, you know, they didn't remember getting anything tangible out of that Ramadan, despite doing so many great things. Um, and so uh, finding this moment, even if you just take uh, the 15 minutes or so that we do each morning to just uh, remember Allah. The hope is that your Ramadan can incorporate this act of rest because this rest then uh, allows for so many other things for you to get in touch with, um, you know, the needs uh, of your mind, body, and soul that you may previously have uh, looked over uh, in terms of when you would go through Ramadan like a sprint. Um, Shams Tabrizi, the uh, uh, you know, the, the teacher of uh, Rumi um, said once that, you know, Allah has, uh, you know, one thing, Allah has everything, you know, in terms of qualities and everything like that. Allah has everything. But the one thing that Allah does not have is brokenness. And so as a human being, bring yourself because we are innately broken bring that to allah bring some of us on different degrees than others but uh bring your brokenness to allah um and bring that time when you are uh when you are in need of uh polishing your heart when you're in need of purifying that heart uh remembrance of allah is the tool that the prophet has taught us to help polish that heart and to help repair that brokenness um, because the the one thing in this world the one thing uh in this existence that is not broken or has the potential to be broken uh is allah and so we want to bring that and lift that up as something that we can bring to allah rather than conceal and hold away so if we slip up in ramadan if we mess up um this is not a cause to uh just feel immense failure or just immense guilt and whatnot this is a cause for us to go closer to our our creator inshallah so uh last time we talked about um ar rahman uh, ar rahim al malik um and as mentioned uh we start off our sessions um with a quick uh recap of the names before that were covered on the session before we do a recitation of the asmail husna the 99 names uh and then we do a brief reflections on uh three names uh additionally today so today we'll cover al quddus as salam uh, and al mu'min um and then we do do a quick dhikr of these names so uh just to recap um ar rahman ar rahim al malik uh you know the two names that are so prominently associated with mercy um and then al malik which just uh, associates with dominion with kingship with you know rulership um and so uh, I'll, I'll lift up just two, a couple quick things that uh, were in 
uh, Al Ghazali's commentary on um, the 99 names, but that uh, of Ar Rahman, um, the portion of that for the creation for humans, like we were talking about last time, is that um, the, uh, the human being should have mercy upon the servants of Allah. Um, who also neglect that person and who also uh, neglect Allah. Um, and that person should uh, turn away from the negligence of Allah um, and should, uh, should turn away from the negligence of Allah and use that mercy to then uh, go forth into the world around. Um, and that, uh, you know, in terms of Ar-Rahman, you go to any length to remove this kind of negligence. You kind of go um, to an extreme to really uh, bless the world with the mercy that you've been created in. Uh, and in terms of Ar-Rahim, it's that uh, he, he gives the example that he does not leave the poverty of a needy person without satisfying it to the best of the ability. The one with Ar-Rahim will not abandon the poor person in the neighborhood and the city until uh, that person has provided for um, the man who is impoverished or the woman who's an impoverished um, and providing them for, uh, you know, a sustained time and doing everything and exhausting all their means to really um, go forth and help this person. And so um, they, if they're not unable to, if they're not able to satisfy um, that person saying the person who has this Rahim, this, uh, this mercifulness um, will literally single out this person in their prayers will give that much of attention and we talked about yesterday how ar-rahman is like the wide open sky of mercy and ar-rahim is like a sun ray that hits you and provides you really specifically you that warmth um and so thinking about that in our life how can we connect that here uh, and lastly that the uh, al-malik reminds us of the uh, the the dominion of allah and reminding us that we are uh, not uh, tied intrinsically to having dominion over anything else. We are solely responsible um, for ourselves, but also for other folks in the context that we have a common creator uh, and that uh, we'll be uh, answerable to that creator in the end. Uh, Ghazali mentions that um, the true king, the true ruler among humanity is the one who realizes that in reality, Allah is the only malik, the only king, the only ruler. And for this reason, that person is always and ever will be dependent if they realize this about al-Malik, uh, that they will um, continue to uh, operate on a uh, understanding that Allah is uh, the only one to be dependent on. And it's really beautiful how he puts this that, uh, nevertheless, the person who is uh, seeing Allah as al-Malik and recognizes this relationship governs their own kingdom in such a manner that their troops and their subjects obey them. The kingdom, which is in a very specific way, uh, is that person's heart and their physical body. Their troops are their appetite, their anger, and their passion. Their subjects are their tongue, their eyes, their hands, and remainder of their organs. And they achieve the rank of the malik um, when they are able to control these things and when they're able to understand that the things around us belong to Allah, who is the true malik. So uh, the last thing just from these names is remembering that uh, each of these lifts up an aspect of connection. We are all connected to one another. We are all connected to the divine. Um, but these remind us that uh, as we go through this life, we are not in any way just, it, it, you know, just uh, alien to anything around us. We are not disconnected from this. We are, we've, cre we've been created in a rich womb of connection and interconnection. Uh, and inshallah, this, uh, this, these names allow us to internalize this. Um, so now just, uh, I'm going to go into the, uh, the 99 uh, names themselves. So I'm going to share my screen real quick here. Inshallah, just like last time, um, I'm going to go through the slides. We're just going to recite the names. If you uh, are familiar with the names and you are familiar just with the recitation of the names, you are welcome to uh, just recite them to yourself. Again, I think we've got everybody muted here, so you're, you're welcome to do what you'd like. If you'd like to turn down the volume for me and just recite it yourself or just recite it along, whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, and inshallah, it, I hope that this will be, uh, this is not a, a, a kind of pop quiz or trivia or something that if you don't know one of the names or if you don't know all the meanings or something like that, uh, that's not by any means something that disqualifies. This is just to help us 
start the session and really start this morning off this Ramadan off just in a divine remembrance. Um, we may not, we may not know our Lord and that might be uh, a thing that we have, you know, before the last day we have on this earth, um, but we make an effort to try and know. And so inshallah, the uh, slide will have the name, the uh, tran uh, a translated name as well. Um, and inshallah, we can uh, derive some benefit from this, but Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar Al-Muttakabir al-Khalik al-Bari al-Musawwir al-Ghaffar al-Qahar al-Wahab al-Razak al-Fatah al-Alim القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيظ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواسع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدل المقتدل قدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباتن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم العفو الرؤوف المالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع نور الهادي البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So inshallah, we start our session off again, just with these divine names. We may not know what they mean. We may not uh, know all of them, but we start off just knowing that there is Allah uh, and Allah is manifest in so many different attributes. And so today, inshallah, we uh, will be covering, as I mentioned really briefly here, uh, Al-Quddus, As-Salam, Al-Mu'min. Um, Al-Quddus, and from the slides you probably saw, uh, Al-Quddus is the most holy, um, the pure. Uh, this name carries a uh, divine quality of purity and freedom, um, and it, it really, it helps make you capable of patience, wisdom, gratefulness, and protects you from weaknesses of lower impulses when you really think about not just purity and sense of being clean, but an internal sense of being clean of, of uh, mind, body and soul type of clean. Um, you, you really free yourselves from things that may take away from that. Uh, and as always, just uh, I've neglected to mention, um, I did this at the last session, but um, we, we are using just as a reference um, and just to guide the uh, divine names, the 99 uh, healing names of the one love by uh, Rosina Fozi al Rawi. Um, and so it, it uh, dives into the divine names uh, from a Sufic uh, tradition. And so really gives a lot of rich metaphors and, uh, you know, just divine secrets behind uh, many of these names that we may 
commonly not have heard growing up. I certainly didn't. Um, so I hope that this would be a chance there. But um, El Quduz is, is such a name that uh, it influences our sense and it enables our, uh, our, our different sensory perceptions to really uh, return to that sacred origin, to that pure nafs, to that pure creation, um, and to a place to where um, our uh, knowledge, our understanding, and our uh, you know, mind, body, and soul are all connected on a uh, true, deeper self um, without uh, kind of uh, kind of like you think of polishing something that's just become dusty, the polishing something that's become worn. Um, we go through life and we really do, uh, you know, whether through different influences or just our journeys, uh, we, we, we do go from something really shiny to getting some rust to getting um, some blemishes here and there. And so Al-Quddus really allows us to uh, take a step back and to really um, be able to polish that and to, to, to go through life polished and renewed. Um, and with that, that new sense of shininess and uh, of, of a rebirth, um, as opposed to just continuing to take on the wear and tear the world will bring about. Uh, and the root of Quddus uh, brings about meanings of healing. Uh, holiness, purity, uh, and even paradise. Um, and it calls for us, as I mentioned, to surrender the ego. Um, and it's the way that, uh, that in, in a way, is like that way back home. We talked about uh, how it um, wants us to clean our ego and to, to, just, to just surrender that ego. Um, but it uh, really calls you back home, calls you back to that original blessed uh, state that you were created uh, and that pure state um, and away from any kind of uh, vain impulses or um, negative passions or self-serving deeds or any destructive behaviors that might be there or relationships in your life. It really helps you put that reset on um, and uh, gives you no other kind of true aspiration and sense where, where you are really reaching in terms of your own spirituality and your heart, uh, but to Allah alone. Um, so you're no longer maybe uh, in the clutches of someone that may be, uh, may, may exercise kind of dominion over you or you have, or exercise some kind of influence, uh, or you feel tied to your work to, to a degree that it feels like it's over consuming or anything like that. Um, but that uh, you, you remove these, these, uh, these worldly attachments, um, but you understand that while you're still connected to this world in terms of your body, uh, your soul uh, still has that uh, dying aspiration to go to Allah alone. Um, and so in keeping that, even if you are in this world wholly connected on a busy, you know, 40, 50 hour um, work schedule uh, per week and or in Ramadan right now, just going in overdrive, um, that regardless, we make that intention to purify ourselves because we through our actions, through anything we go in life, we do get uh, these different blemishes and we want to uh, find a way to help purify that uh, and to clean us, uh, to make, to polish us. Uh, and Al-Qadus is that, that way. Uh, the next name is As-Salam. It's a very uh, beautiful and very popular and very just um, calming name, even as you just say it, As-Salam. Um, you know, we say it so many times in terms of our uh, As-Salamu Alaikum just to, to each other. Um, and it comes from this name of uh, Allah of as -Salam, as the source of peace and security, um, the peace, the, the salvation, just this, you, you just sense so much uh, abundance of just a security here. But uh, as -Salam, uh is described as the quality of uh, those, of the, the ones who have purified their own hearts of hatred, treachery, envy, jealousy, any of these kind of negative things that really put their hearts in a tense position and in a uh, torn um, just state of a state of being. Um, and now imagine that if that is the one who is uh, Salam in terms of a person, what about the one who created Salam of, of, uh, of someone who was a Salam, the one who was a source of this peace. Um, and the root of Salam, um, you know, denotes meanings of peace, but also surrender. Um, we, we often see, you know, uh, when people try to define Islam, at least when they did uh, back after 9-11, it was like, well, Islam, is, is it peace or is it submission? Is it surrender? Like, you know, you get these tabloid headlines. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's not that kind of surrender. It's not that kind of just, uh, oh, you know, I, I, I give up or this kind of submission. Um, it's the meaning of 
being safe and sound and unharmed and really surrendering oneself to one's uh, creator uh, and away from one's uh, the, the attachments of this world. And as gives us that capacity and inner creative strength to really give up what we want to renounce. If, if we want to remove any kind of attachments, uh, as -salam is that root to help us really truly find that peace because we know uh, if we're seeking peace, we, we, we are looking for peace, uh, as -salam is, uh, we, we know where to look for that peace. Um, and as -salam means, as I mentioned, to feel that divine protection with as -salam, uh, wherever we might be um, and surrender. Um, in a sense that not like you throw your hands up and it's just like, hey, I'm, I'm done or just like surrender uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the conversational sense, but really understanding that uh, we, this connects back to Al-Malik, that we as corporeal bodies um, are here for a finite period of time our, and, and our bodies, but our minds and our souls are uh, the um, creation of and the property of Allah. Uh, and we are caretakers. We are stewards of this body. We are stewards of the world around us. Um, and so we surrender ourselves, our internal self, not just ourselves and just put us out, but we surrender our internal self to knowing that um, Allah has dominion over us. And so it gives us a higher sense of mindfulness um, when we are uh, going about in the world. And so uh, we, we go about with a higher sense of mindfulness, but we know that we are caretaking um, for this body, for also um, that which is uh, has been given to us. And lastly, Al-Mu'min. Um, this uh, is a name that has a connotation, the meanings of the believer, um, the one who grants safety, the one who grants belief, the one who grants protection, safety, um, and the one who makes secure, the protector, um, the giver of faith. Um, so many things come from that, uh, the root which concerns safety and belief, faithfulness, reliability, trustworthiness. Um, and al-mu'min is not, nor is it, nor does it foster a sense of blind faith or does it encourage blind faith? Uh, rather, it encourages a bold faith. Um, you, you, seek, uh, you see the, the meaning here of uh, it, it's a giver of faith, but it's also a protector. So you, you, you come to see your faith as a source of protection. You come to see your faith as not something you hide from or something that um, should, should make you cower back or feel ashamed. Uh, your faith is something that uh, is encouraged to be one that you own up to your mistakes. You uh, acknowledge your weaknesses. You're, you're very candid with them, um, but you don't cower at them. Um, and this is the kind of faith that Al-Mu'min gives because it's the faith that's been bestowed, but it's also a protection. So it's a, it's a kind of a double-edged sword that, that, that you're given um, here. And that those who carry the quality of Al-Mu'min, um, they're free from all forms of kind of fear and doubt in situations, in any life situation, but especially situations in which um, their faith is on the line. Um, the ones who uh, imbue this quality and who, who really derive it um, really find it helpful when, when feeling lost um, because it's uh, from a source that gives them the faith, but also a source that will also give them that protection. So their faith as a source of protection. Um, and lastly, uh, Al-Mu'min helps us decide uh, in terms of because it gives us faith, what is maybe just and adequate in the moment? What's the right and wrong? Um, we have that internal sense of that right and wrong. Um, and uh, this name originates uh, gives it from this name, uh, Iman, our faith itself proceeds. Um, and so it helps us understand that, uh, you know, we have an internal deep connection to Allah um, in our mind, in our body, in our soul, um, and that our belief is the source of protection. Uh, and that uh, when we act on this, when we activate true faith, it doesn't make us radicals. It, it shouldn't make us radicals. It shouldn't make us fanatics, um, but it should enable us to then know the uh, eternal spiritual truths that, that exist within us and also uh, to see divinity and the divine creation around us. So when we get activated in our faith, we don't start to take up violence. We don't start to do things that harm people on the outside rather, or ourselves. Rather, we start to see um, the belief we've been given we see the protection that it is, and we extend that protection to that which is around us because we see everything in the world is a reflection of the divine uh, in that creation. And so we heighten ourselves to be aware that as people who've been given Iman, as people who've been trusted with this, we are also trusted with being protected, but we also protect. Um, and so we don't harm the world around us. We actually guard it 
regardless of our differences, regardless of the faith, regardless of uh, how we look or how we talk or anything like that, um, we, we stand up for one another um, in, in matters of just and in matters of good. Um, but we do that because the true faith inspires or the true faith that is imbued by Al-Mu'min uh, inspires that. So inshallah with that, we conclude on the uh, reflection of these uh, divine names of this uh, session, Al-Qudus, As-Salam, Al-Mu'min. And we go into the dhikr um, of this and the, the remembrance uh, of Allah. Um, so inshallah, as, as last time, uh, we will uh, do uh, the recitation of the three names. Um, and then also in between, uh, we're going to do a recitation of La ilaha illallah. Uh, you are welcome to just kind of at this point, just kind of close your eyes, whatever you need to do. Your eyes probably might already be closed because it's after Fajr. Uh, we've gone a little bit over time here, but uh, inshallah, this will be a little bit benefit here as we close out. Um, so just center yourself, just center yourself and um, just feel that you are in the presence of uh, in the presence of the divine, but also in the presence of these names of a name that engenders purity, a name that engenders peace and a name that engenders protection and faith. So inshallah, we'll go ahead and we'll begin here. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Quddus, 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 Ya Quddus, 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 La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Assalamu alaikum 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 Ya salam ya salam ya salam ya salam ya salam Ya salam, ya salam, ya salam. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al mu'min, 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 al mu'min. Ya mu'min, 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 ya mu'min. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Sisters and brothers, Jazakla Khair for joining us. I apologize for going over time here, but inshallah, we see these names as a means uh, of connection to the divine, a connection to one another. They are a reminder of uh, the divine manifest in our life in such a way that uh, we, we sometimes take for granted. And in Ramadan, when we're going 100 miles an hour, uh, we can take a moment to just recognize the divinity around us. And so inshallah, tomorrow, we'll connect another three names uh, while continuing this conversation here. Um, but be blessed, inshallah, have a blessed Ramadan and rest of the day for those of you who might be fasting uh, and those of you who aren't, um, you know, just uh, take in what you can for from Ramadan, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.